Okay, so in lesson two, we created this part. And what I've done is I've actually saved it um, up the top there. It would have been called part one IPT. I'll just quickly go through how to save that. So you've got it on the screen here. You need to save it. So you go file, save as. It gets rid of the part and you just call it lock plate and it should save underneath lock plate one. Just go save. And that should be right. So you've got this stored underneath your folder. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually put that on a sheet. So you can close that if you wish. It makes no difference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put it on a sheet. Now, normally you could go new, metric, get a sheet here. But there's none of the templates that I've already created there. These are all defaults that come with Inventor, uh, the Inventor program. So I don't actually want any of those. I'm going to do one that I've already created. So I'm going to open one. Now there's no template underneath that. There's no drawing sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look for my template. This little button here, I'm going to go up and it goes to Inventor. Now this is where all of my folders are. And down the bottom, you can see I've got my templates here. This is the latest one. I'm just going to double click on that. It says it's not in the current location. Just go yes, because you want to open it. Um, this particular template has a problem with the image on it. It wasn't installed properly, so it's going to come up with an error here. Uh, later on, you'll see that I have done a um, lesson on how to create your own template. And we'll be using the uh, the textbook, the Bounding House textbook, to get your uh, title blocks done properly. That's on page 12 of your textbook. All right, so here you go. We're back here. It says Resolve Link. Just close that. It'll fix it up and install it. So there's your sheet. You can see that that logo is down the bottom there. I've got the school name, technology and design. It's got places for you to put stuff and it's got this little thing here which says that that's third angle and it's got this A3 sheet size. All those things are important but if you go to page 12 on your textbook you'll see how to set that up properly. Uh, for the moment we're going to use this sheet and it's no problems with you handing in work on this sheet. All right so we've got this sheet you notice that the ribbon at the top has changed. We're going to go base and base comes up like this. Now it's got a little camera with a little kind of file with a magnifying glass over it. If you click on that, you go looking for it. Now, because I was outside of this before, you need to go back and find it again. Just make sure you keep going to lock plate one. And there's the part that you want to install. So I'm going to go open. All right, a little bit confusing. You see all this here? You can rotate it to find the view you want. So it says a front view from there. Let's just check that. It says a front view from there and a side view from B. So it wants that and that. So we've got to get the front view first. And I'm going to get a top view and a side view. All right, so we're right to go. So that's the view I want. And I want to drag this one out here. And I want to drag this one up here. Notice how it projects it exactly to where it should be. Um, they're, they're in line. It always does the front view first. Not advised to do it reverse like this and put a underside view. You've got a couple of options over here. It says scale one is to one. One of the one is looking good there. We should be able to put an isometric up in the corner as well. There it is. And that's the right way for that isometric. It shows the most information. It says label here. So do we need to stick a label there? We might do that later on. So if everything's right, I know it's not in the right position. We'll organize that in a minute. We'll go OK. So a couple of things that we can do. I can grab that and I can move it down here. Notice how this orthographic projection stays in line. So there you go. I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to pull it down there. And this one, I'm going to drag it across here. Now we can alter those if we wish. If I click on this, We've got hidden detail from this up here. That's good. We've got hidden detail from there. So it looks like everything's good. If I double click on that little red box, this comes up. You've got a couple of options up here. This one here says hidden line. This one here says hidden line removed. So if I hit that one and go OK, all of my hidden detail is gone. 
Now in an orthographic projection, you want your hidden detail. So I'll just double click on that again. This is the one I want. This one here shades it. You don't really need that in this one here. Um, because I'm in that one there, I'm going to call this one Front View. All in capitals. And when I go OK, you can see that that hasn't popped up. Let's have a look to see why. I go double click on that. Uh, light bulb. Toggle label visibility. There you go. Just click on that. Go OK. There's our front view. Now I accidentally stuck that one in there. I'll click on it and delete it. OK. So I'm going to drag that back into the corner a little bit. These views aren't right. So if I just double click on that. Sorry if I go on that outside one. I can change that to right side view. OK. And the top one will be top view. OK. So that's looking pretty good. I think these are probably spaced out a little bit too much. I'm just going to uh, move that one up a little bit. You need to make this as even as you possibly can. We've got to dimension it yet. We'll have a look at this one. View 39, that's not what we want. So we'll double click on that and we'll change this to isometric view. All capitals. And we'll go, scale looks right, okay. All right, so I've left a little bit of space there so we can dimension. Um, while we're on this, I'm going to leave dimensioning for the next um, video. That'll be lesson four. But for all intents and purposes, I think we really need to have a look at this. This is one bit that a lot of students forget to do. You need to give it a title, drawn by who, sheet one or one or one or two, however many sheets you've got, and you need to say what the title is. Now, as I said earlier, there's a lesson on how you can actually draw and make your own template. So where it's got drawn by, you could put your name in there permanently. So if you, have, if you have a look at that, I can't delete any of that, which is great. However, I want to put a title in there and all that sort of stuff. So I'll just show you how to do that. Um, if I go annotate, sketch, text comes up. I'm just going to click in there and I'm going to put... Um, your name, all in capitals. Okay. Now, if I I can actually click the next one as well. I'm just going to go escape and I'll push this down here, centralize it, and we should be right to go. A few problems with text. You can see that you can delete that now. If I double click on that text, this comes up. It's default 3.5. If you have a look in your textbook, it'll show you what heights they should be for different size sheets. Um, if you want to make it bigger, you've got to highlight it and change it to whatever it says up here. So 5 millimeters. Okay, you can see that that's actually changed sizes. 3.5 is fine in this one. So I'm just going to highlight that again, make it 3.5. OK. Let's try that again. Highlight it. 3.5. 3 there you go. OK. And I'll centralize it here. You can, you're can. you actually allowed to use different sizes in here. But if you have a look in your textbooks, it'll tell you about that. So you need to fill in this. Obviously, the assessment title would be uh, isometric view and orthographic projection. All right, hang on. Okay, so uh, I just stopped it there for a minute and prepared this. I've written isometric view and orthographic projection for the assessment title. I'm going to go OK. Now, obviously, it goes over the side, so that's no good. I'll just hit Escape to get back into this. Double click on it, um, and I'll hit Enter. OK, and that's looking a lot better. So you've got isometric view and orthographic projection. Or you could call that orthographic projection and isometric view. Up here in the title, you would obviously go and write lock plate. 
because that's what we are actually drawing. And lock plate, I had mine with a space there. Go OK. Escape. Move him up a little bit into the middle. Zoom in if you're having trouble with that. There you go. It looks pretty good. All right. So there you go. Um, you should be able to get up to that pretty easily. There's nothing difficult about that. You just need to make sure that your front view is the one with the most information or whatever they ask for. Check to see if they want a right side or a left side view or both. See if they want a top view as well. Notice how we've got front view, right side view and top view on these. When, later on when we come to do engineering drawings with many parts, you'll notice that those will not be put in. But in intent, for all intents and purposes at the moment, while these are just normal blocks, we're going to put them in. All right, have a go at that. The next lesson will be on how to dimension this drawing. Okay, see you soon.